So the first thing I'm going to do here is install the, the, the PHD virtual backup console software. And that's pretty easy. We just go to the media that we downloaded from PHD virtuals website. Click on the install and we're going to click run here. Uh, you will need .NET version um, 2, 2.0 or higher. Um, uh, if you don't have 2.0 on there, 3.5 will, will work. I have tried it with 4.0 alone and just having uh, .NET 4 does not work. So at least 3.5 and, and 2 or 2.0 will, will work. Uh, you can see it complained about having the, the client open that's because it's going to install the plugin as well so you'd have to restart it anyway so we can just go ahead and close that for now until after the installation and we'll just go through and click next next it's pretty easy installation process here to install the console and plugin it goes by fairly quickly and we're finished um, once that's done, we can go ahead and uh, log into vCenter. So now that we're logged in the into vCenter, we can just go ahead and verify that the plugin is actually installed and it's enabled. And as we can see here, that is so. Uh, we'll go ahead and close here. The next step is to deploy the virtual appliance or the the VBA um, you can see here we have the latest version 4.5 selected and we'll go ahead and click next do this install this is uh, we'll follow the typical uh, import of a virtual appliance so there's nothing um, out of the ordinary going through this process we'll put in a name select the data center um, select the cluster that we're going to add that into. Pick this data store for it to land on. Choose the appropriate network or port group. And then we'll go ahead and make sure the, the uh, summary is okay and we'll click finish here. We're not going to power it on now because we, once it's done creating the virtual machine, I'm going to add a virtual disk to the configuration. So now the virtual appliance has completed its uh, import and we're going to go ahead and edit the virtual appliance and we're going to give it a an additional hard disk so that um, this is where our backup will land and create this drive and we're going to make it 80 gigs in this environment and of course you want to make sure you set it for the appropriate um, amount of storage that you're going to need in uh, your production environment uh, make sure that you select the next SCSI ID uh, on SCSI um, bus zero. Uh, do not try to select anything higher than the, the zero because it will not discover that drive. So we're going to go ahead and select zero dash one here and click next and then finish. And just going through the configuration of the, def the default configuration of the virtual machine, you can see it gives it uh, one gig. Uh, you should bump this up um, just so it's uh, sized appropriately for your environment. And I'm going to give it a two CPUs with um, two cores here. Uh, we can see that the SCSI controller that's um, default is the pair virtualized SCSI controller and the network is the VMX net 3 version and it's at um, uh, the virtual hardware version is version 7 so with this done 
this uh, hard disk added we'll go ahead and click OK and finish uh, and commit the changes that we just made and with that done we'll go ahead and power the the virtual appliance on so the the VBA is running a version of Ubuntu and if we look through the the installation or you edit the uh, configuration once it comes back up here you'll see that the uh, settings for the OS is set for uh, Ubuntu 64-bit so the first time the the virtual machine boots up we're going to have to configure the network settings on it um, you can do that by hitting control land once the the dialog comes up in the during the boot up of the virtual machine we'll go ahead and choose static for this configuration and configure the IP address that we want and be aware that you will have to uh, configure or enter an alternate DNS server in this list if you do not it will error when you try to save it so with all the parameters configured we'll go ahead and select uh, save and hit enter and then we'll go ahead and reboot the virtual appliance so with the virtual machine uh, rebooted you can go into the summary tab here of that virtual machine and we can see that the uh, VMware tools is running uh, the IP address of it, the, the settings, as I said the guest OS is uh, Ubuntu Linux 64-bit and we're at the latest version of 5.4 um, so everything looks good from here the virtual machine is up the plugin is installed we can simply right click on the uh, VBA uh, go down to the PHD virtual backup and then open up the console from here once the console is open we can see the virtual appliance um, free free storage we can see it's unavailable because if you look down here at the bottom uh, there are a couple of things that are still pending that we configure one of them is going to be the uh, connecting to the virtual center server and the other is going to be adding the storage to the virtual appliance that's going to be used for the backup so if we go ahead and click under configuration so on the first tab general tab we're going to get um, some options here uh, one at the top being setting up the time zone um, a little below that is going to be the credentials and setting in the server for the vCenter server and we're going to go ahead and configure that where if you use the the name you will need to put in the fully qualified name of the uh, of the machine or the virtual center server Uh, you can see we have a trial license configured here so back under configuration we'll configure the storage um, in here we can attach the the local virtual disk or use NFS or SIFS since I created a virtual disk for this I'm going to go ahead and select that and we can see that it, it detected that virtual disk and um, it's showing up as usable at the bottom here in the advanced options we can configure the compression and we can also set up the percent that we want to use for our warning levels so these are the two general tabs setting up the uh, licensing and then the backups uh, the storage device uh, you get a couple other tabs here networking where you can change the networking configuration you can go ahead and um, enable email alerts and set up the backup retention here from um, keep all or we can uh, set it to a typical where you you know you have so many days where it keeps the uh, the backup this can also be you can set up a customized one as well we're going to choose keep all for this scenario here 
You can uh, configure replication under the replication tab. That will be in a later um, video. Under the connectors, here we can enable sharing of the virtual backups. Um, and you can also configure uh, username and password uh, for those connections. And the one here is for the, the replication sharing. With that done, we'll go ahead and click Save. Uh, we'll restart the appliance. Now, once the the virtual appliance is uh, done booting up and restarting, we can go back into the console and we can see that now the uh, alerts from at, that were at the bottom are gone, and we can see that the virtual appliance. Um, we can see that the storage has been connected here. So the basic configuration is done. In a later video, we'll go over configuring backups and, and replication using the PHD virtual appliance.